so i think recording has started uh, uh people are joining huge in number it's beyond 100 and people are joining uh, it's very difficult to accommodate all uh, so uh, good evening to all of you uh, right now we are having our speaker professor bishnu choudhury and uh, he is a great orator and he is also a very good scholar on today's topic odisha politics today uh, he will speak on introducing odisha politics uh, since the professor uh, belongs to barhampur university uh, i have requested to one of my friend come colleague dr sarada prashanna raut to introduce the speaker and then i will introduce the topic and after that the speaker will speak on this topic so may i request dr sarada prasanna raut to introduce our speaker today uh yes uh, himan so yes uh, so uh, should i uh, start uh, yes you can you can you can okay okay so thank you so much uh, dr hanshu for giving me for, for giving me this opportunity to introduce uh, today's speaker and uh, as for the your uh, uh, initial remark he is uh, really a well known uh, personality and speaker and also good orator and also i know personally he is also a very good person so uh, uh <clears throat> since uh, when i joined the university mm-hmm. and also ah uh, uh, sorry sorry sarada prasanna raut you please unmute yourself okay uh, okay okay uh, uh, yeah yeah so he has written uh, many article uh, on this topic in the odisha politics and also he is known for this uh, subject very uh, very long time and also i have attended some of uh, his uh, lecture and uh, through his lecture also i kn- knew many uh, aspect of the odisha politics so definitely i think today uh, all the presenters will uh, know in details about the odisha politics and also uh, he is uh, known for uh, Uh, in our university uh, like uh, 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 is it uh, like he know each and everything uh, about the odisha politics and every persons so one kind of encyclopedia you can call it uh, regarding the odisha politics so definitely i think today's lecture is uh, going to very interesting and uh, obviously i think uh, Uh, also uh, he is a former professor of uh, uh, the pg department political science barhampur university and along with uh, uh, he, he he was holding many other important positions uh, the pg council chairman then cdc then sports council many other capacity he had delivered during his tenure uh, in the university and uh, till today also he is contributing so much to the our department of political science and uh, i think many things is the, there to speak about the today speaker but uh, i think uh, uh, maybe uh, I, i think today will uh, uh, hear uh, the important aspect the today's topic from our speaker so thank you himanshu abu for giving me this opportunity and uh, speak about my professor of my department and obviously i think uh, the today's uh, uh, lecture is uh, going to very interesting huh? as for the uh, the concept so thank you so much uh, so thank you uh, sarada babu uh, i think today i'm so happy and i'm very surprised that uh, right now 148 uh, you know participants has already joined and i can see the face of professor apurva kumar apurva mukhopadhyay from bardhavan university he has also joined with us so i think uh, a speaker needs the audience and i think the number of audience today right now it's 152 uh, the number of audience uh, will give a 
you know a greater input to the speaker and i hope that the speaker will speak and uh, i i think that today the speaker will blast actually and it's a i'm using i'm sorry for using this term blast actually okay let me do uh, introduce the topic the topic the title of the topic uh, today uh, that introducing odisha politics so politics means basically as a political science student we understand politics means power and interest mostly and odisha politics means understanding the power and interest in odisha so certainly it is not odisha politics uh, doesn't offer a different model of politics uh, rather it is a part of uh, india's federal parliamentary representative democracy where union government exercises uh, sovereign rights Odisha state has also the multi-party uh, system, but practically it has two main political parties, such as BJP and BJD. Now, along with Indian National Congress, since March 2000, the BJD, under the leadership of uh, Navin Patnaik, is ruling over Odisha. Though other parties, such as BJP, Congress, and Communist parties, are there in the assembly, then why BJD is ruling? since long so that is the first question that comes to our mind and follow up question to this first question is that what is the nature of odisha politics so if one see the history of odisha politics one may find 13 chief ministers from indian national congress party if congress is having a strong root in odisha politics then why is it losing its feet now that is the third question no doubt national politics in national politics bjp is emerging very strongly especially after 2014 election but why the impact of bjp is very less in odisha politics along with these four questions the other important questions of odisha politics are what is the political culture of odisha how culture odia culture has shaped the politics and how politics has saved the odia culture how to understand the political corruption in odisha is there any uh, change in the voting behavior of odisha what is the status of women politics in odisha how to understand political economy of odisha i hope since today's speaker is very good at odisha politics he will provide us a comprehensive understanding of odisha politics by dealing with these questions so now i welcome our speaker professor vishnu choudhury to speak on this topic sir welcome you sir now you can start sir ajir class b a pilanga pai na ko pilanga pai so kindly mute yourself let's start the talk then we we'll discuss later vishnu okay. sir you can start the session right now okay thank you yes yes sir himanshu babu ticket ticket panch jote ticket connection ro need to bhala ticket mu e computer ro korchi hala himanshu one minute yes yes so uh it's a request to all participants to bear this uh this speaker will use his laptop so that let's wait for two or three minutes
Am I audible? Uh, yes, sir. You are Am audible. Am I audible, Himan Sababu? Yes, sir. You are very much audible. Audible. I'm starting. The problem is, uh, is, uh, is it disconnected? So I'm trying in the computer. I will start in the meanwhile. It will repeat. Okay. Yes, so, sir. Please. Uh, I'm very happy. I'm happy that uh, this evening will be very fruitful because I find a large number of uh, young students and scholars. They are very much interested to know about Odisha and Odisha politics. The topic being introducing Odisha politics, let me first uh, tell the students that uh, we have to know the history, the culture, the society, to know about the politics. Because Odisha is a state or a province with 3,000 years of written history. Like India has a history of 5,000 years. In Orissa, we have a history of 3,000 years. And uh, we had a very rich and glorious history. We had a horrible past. But because of uh, different uh, historical reasons, we faced many challenges. For example, Odisha in different uh, periods of history have been identified with names like, uh, say, Kalinga, Kala. But uh, if you take into the history of uh, Odisha, you will find that we had the Hindu rulers, we had the Mughal rulers, then we had the Maratha rulers. Please, sir, properly and, your voice. And we sir, audio is not clear. Rulers. Then we had a protracted struggle against the British to get our freedom. I why think is it not clear? Yeah, maybe there, is, there will be some network problem. Why, 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 why? Yes, sir. You must be having some problem. I think uh, my voice proper. is yeah. always very clear. First step is, sorry. Uh, the, so, Apurva Babu, am I audible? Good evening, am I audible? Not audible. Audible, sir. Then sir, clearly so, you. you are clearly audible. How do I how do I how do May I, I introduce Odisha? Sixteen eighty eight we had eighteen sixty six we had a Nanka Durbiksha. But before that, due to the historical and other reasons, administrative reasons, the Odia speaking tracts were distributed under the administration of different areas during the British period. Take for example, The Odisha division was uh, attached to the Bengal presidency. From Chilka Lake till the south, the Kalinga area or the southern area it was, it was taken to Madras presidency. Then the Sambalpur
region, the western region, it was kept under the central provinces. So we had to fight for the unification of Uriya-speaking tracts. It was a long journey that started from 1870. But I have already given you the year 1866, where due to the great famine known as Nanka Durbhikya. It was called Nanka Durbhikya because it has fallen on the ninth legal year of the accession of Puri Raja. So, it, it was commented that because of uh, the man-made disaster where thousands and lakhs of people died from the excess of those who died, the Uriya nationalism grew. We, had, we have now very good books on Odia nationalism written by historians, political scientists, so there is no depth of literature. So from 1870, you find in different regions, in the southern region, in Sambalpur region, in the Odisha division, we fought for our Odia language, our Odia culture. In fact, it was commented by Kanti Chandra Phadacharji, a teacher of the Baleshwar Jilla School, that Odia acta Swatantra Bhasa Noy. So it was this comment was opposed by not only Odias, but even domiciled Bengalis. That Odia is not a perverted form of Bengali. But Odia always has a great history. And therefore, the fight became very acute after 1882 when Madhubabu, Madhusudan Das, he formed the association to articulate the interest of the Odias. Then in the next phase, you find that 1902, Ganjam district took a very leading role and uh, the Ramha meeting, organized by Harihar Madras Dev, united the people of different parts of Odisha. And in 1903, we had the Utkala Union Conference, also known as Utkala. Sammilani. It was under the dynamic leadership of uh, Madhusudan Das, who was a great patriot, who was a great lover of Udiya language, literature, and culture. He was the man who coordinated the activities, and we find the Utkala Samilani was founded at Katak during December 1903. So from 1903 till 1936, we had struggled in different phases. And a particular mention can be made about the partition of Bengal in 1905 and the murder of Sambalpur and uh, few federated states with Bengal. Mention can be made about the creation of Bihar Odisha province, which uh, functioned from 1st April 1912 with uh, Charles Bailey as the first governor, 
then uh, mention can be made about the other development that took place. Particularly, we find that uh, there were a lot of struggle. And uh, in the conference, the demand for Uriyas were very forcible the Parala Khamindi and the Ramchandra Murza. So I'm not going to details of uh, that movement except to suggest that we had a very glorious forceful movement to get our demands fulfilled for uniting all the Korea sticking tracks and under the Government of India I should know that it is the largest Sir, we cannot hear you. Vishnu, sir. So, 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 so there is some network problem. Uh, then, uh, so we, uh, we, we. Yeah. After that. That. Many states were created in India on the basis of their demand and on the basis of the Fazal Ali Commission. Now, no longer, long way is the basis of creation of states. Two other factors have entered. One is geographical contiguity. The other is economic viability. In the creation of Jharkhand, Uttarakhand, or even Telangana now, Long wage is not the consideration. So this is one. Second point that I would like to give you, you look at the caption or the opinion, Odisha is rich, Odias are poor. You have also the caption, we have been listening, hearing this for decades, there is a poverty in the midst of plenty. We have uh, natural resources, like mining resources, forest resources, water resources, a coastline of 482 kilometers. 11% 11, 11 of the water resources we have in the country, it is in Odisha. So in spite of all these, why Odisha is poor? And we are connecting this uh, poverty, economy, with that of politics. So coming to the politics of uh, Odisha, let me start with the politics that uh, started from 1936, when we got our linguistic-oriented state or linguistic-based state. We are the first election under the Government of India Act 1935 in the first part of 1937. It was not based on adult suffrage. It was based on how much you pay land revenue. For example, in this part of Odisha, the rate was one rupee four annas revenue to, in terms of land revenue to be paid to the exchequer. So that was called restricted franchise. So we had election. And we had four political parties which were there in Odisha politics. Obviously, the Indian National Congress. The second party was the National Party, also known as Parala Party, founded by Maharaja Kushan Chandra Gajapati Narayan Dev, Raja Sahib of Parala Khamdi. We had the United Party, 
founded by Esan Bhanjadev, the Tikayat of Konika, popular known as Konika Party. We had the independent party founded by Ramchandra Mardaras Dev, the Raja Sahib of Khalikot and Atagod Estates, known as Khalikot Party. So these were the four political parties. So elections were held. And out of 60 seats, four were nominated seats. Out of 60, four were nominated. For 56 seats, elections were held. And the Congress got 36. And other parties, they got six, five, including Independent Party of Khalikot, other no party candidates got 10 seats. So Congress was in a majority. And therefore, when the first governor, Sir John Austin Havak, invited the leader of the Congress Legislative Party, Yusuna Das, who hailed from Ganjam district, my district, he was uh, not prepared to accept because the Congress decided that uh, the governor must give in writing that in the functioning of the elected government, the governor will not interfere or use his special powers. He will also give in writing that he will not set at naught the decisions taken by the popular elected government. With the refusal of such assurance, Vishwanath Das denied to form the government. Under that circumstances, the leader of the National Party, Maharaja Krishnachandra Gajapati, he formed his government on 1st April 1937. After a few months, there was an agreement between the Congress and the Viceroy. And therefore, the Congress directed its uh, leaders to accept the offer of being the Prime Minister of different states. So under that circumstances, 13 April 1937, Maharaja Paralakshmi resigned. And on 19th of July 1937, Maharaja Paralakshmi Das became the Chief Minister. He continued in a very good spirit. He brought many legislations, which at that time were considered to be progressive regarding the land tenure, regarding the uh, control of the cooperatives, particular land mortgage banks. So it, it was a government which wanted to create an anti-feudal atmosphere in the state. But suddenly, India was declared as a belligerent power, and the Congress took it otherwise and said, since you have declared India as a belligerent power without consulting Mahatma Gandhi, our leader, and the Indian National Congress, we will resign. Under those circumstances, 4th November 1939, Vishwanath Babu resigned as the Prime Minister of Odisha. Then the state was placed under governor's rule under the Section 93 of the Government of India Act 1935. Then again, Maharaja Parla became the Prime Minister in 41, and uh, he continued up to 44. During this period, he had done very good work, but he was leading a minority government because we had the majority of the Congress MLAs in the Vidhan Sabha. So in that particular ministry, the Nilakanta Das and uh, Godavari Smisra, that group, Das Misra combined, they supported the Maharaja. In this connection, I, I want to make it very clear that in Odisha Congress, we had three factions working. The Gandhian group, the Swarajist group, and the Socialist group. 
the Gandhian group was led by Hare Krishna Mahatma. The socialist group was led by leaders like Navakrishna Choudhury, then Surindra Dibedi, Malati Choudhury and others. Then uh, the Swarajist group was led by Das Misra combined. So th this was a factionalism that was identified by, for the first time, by F.G. Bailey in his book, Social and Economic Change in Odisha in 1959, which was the first book of its kind, which talked about factionalism, which talked about Odisha politics, because Bailey, though he was a social anthropologist, he made a, a very good research on the political aspect also, apart from his anthropological viewpoint, he also studied the Bishapura village near Pulbani, and that was a very good book. But before that, we must remember that we had two other very good books. One was the Odia Movement, written by Niranjan Patnag and his friend Chakrapani Pradhan, known as Two Bachelors of Arts. And in any research, you find the reference of Two Bachelors of Book. Then we had another book written in a very outstanding uh, manner, very good English, by Lal Mohan Patnaik, The Resurrected Odisha, published in 1941. That book was, uh, Nirandan Babu's book was published in 1919 by the Gauranga Press, Calcutta, and this was in 41. These were the two books very available for researchers to undertake research in the later period. So it was Bailey who first time talked about factionalism in Odisha around the local identity and caste identity. The Alakasalam group in Jagasimpur, then under the United Katak, was headed by Mahatab, so Raj Krishna Bose. Then uh, we had Ramakrishna Choudhury, Jadumani Mangaraj, they had the uh, Alakasana group. Then we had the Satyavadi group, all from Puri district, all were Brahmins, all were close associates of Gopavandu Das. And this dynamism, caste dynamism and regional dimension was very clear. And after Gopavandu died on 17 June, at the age of 51, in the year 1928, the schism between these groups became acute. I am not going to dilate on that point. So, in spite of the fact that Maharaja led a minority government, he gave us Utkal University in 1943. He gave us the medical school at Katak, which subsequently became medical college. He gave proposal for establishing a high court in Orissa. He gave proposal for having the rice resistance stood at Vidyadharpur near Katak. So wonderful work he has done. And he always said, in spite of the fact that I was in a minority, please test me for, uh, through my work done. Then we find that we had, again after his designation, there was a proposal. Names of Dibakar Patnai, Ramchandra Madhuras Dev, others cropped in, but nobody could lead the government. Again, there was the governor's rule, and we had in 1946 another election where Congress had a clean sweep because of its involvement in the Quit India movement, because the congressmen were very popular. Many, many of the candidates were elected on no post. And Hare Krishna Mahata became the Prime Minister. Then after independence, it was redesignated as Chief Minister. That was the pre-independence story. So in between, if you talk about politics, what were the parties that came in? Take for example, we had the Communist Party formed in the All India level in 1925. But in Orissa, it was formed after 11 years, in 1936, December, by Bhagavad Charana Panigrahi, by Prananath Patnaik, Guru Charana Patnaik, Ananda Patnaik, and others. 
that was the part then we had the forward block which came in 1939 and the close uh, associates of netaji in odisha were dibakar patnaik then vibhudanda misra nilakantha das and others forward block became very prominent then we had the socialist group which formed in 1933 for the first time a peace and league and in 1934 at patna when the congress socialist party was formed all these people were identified but it was seen that in the congress socialist party communist function so jay prakash narayan came to attack and openly declared in view of the fact that the communists have taken over the csp is dissolved so navakrishna choudhury and others they dissolved the csp they formed the socialist party and all that and in the post independence period we have different political parties how they function for example not only that we got independence in 47 we had the merger of princely states also called as native states also called as gorajatas in odisha it is said the merger of princely states started from nilgiri in baleswar hari krishna mahotsav's own district and ended with the merger of hyderabad under the nizam so naturally you find that this merger of princely states we had some princely states 26 in number who which uh, were having intolerable administration they were anti people they provided the feudal background and apart from that another interesting is in ganjam district particularly which was under the madras presidency we, we had no princely states but there was zamindari system we had 29 21 zamindaris few malukdaris and those also constituted some sort of feudal culture so later on when odisha politics was discussed either by professor k venkata rao k v rao or by professor b b jena they they talked about feudal grip so for a long time feudalism became a very important component of odisha's political culture influencing the voting behavior of the people influencing the politics of those areas take for example after 47 in october 1914 48 the utkala kosala praja parishad was formed by rn singh dev and pk dev respectively the maharaja patna and kalahandi then this particular party utkala kosala praja parishad was renamed as ganatantra parishad in 1950 then mahata while uh, appearing before the uh, meter commission of enquiry as being quoted by sunit ghos in his very important book on orissa politics called orissa in turmoil he said arun singh dev said to protect the interest of the western orissa to protect uh, our people from the rule of the congress and to checkmate the congress i have found this party initially i was never interested in politics but i was forced to form this political party so what is the implication of this party ganatantra parishad in the whole of western odisha kolahandi balangir even korapur some part of gondamal district they had a complete sway very few non ganatantra parishad candidates could come elected i remember in 1971 from the dir maharaj upur constituency mr hrushikesh hota was elected so the samaj wrote rajar maharaj ankara gado bhangila dir maharaj pur nirbachan maluru congress prarthi hrushikesh hota bijo hi itihas taiyari kale so meaning thereby that the ganatantra parishad became the main opposition of the congress party and you find in the meantime 
we are also the socialists who came up. In 1948, the Socialist Party was formed in Nasik. 1951, there was the Kisan Mazdur Paja Party. And after not getting very good response, in 1952, the Praja Samajabad Dal was formed. And afterwards, in the Praja Samajabad Dal, there was a difference between the perception of Dr. Ramon or Luhia on the particular issue of the Kerala government led by Pattam Thanu Pillai resorting to police firing and killing some Kisans. So the Sanjukta Socialist Party was created. So a scholar wrote, the history of socialist movement in Odisha is a history of splits and counter splits. But students must remember, in spite of the fact that the PSP and the SSP two socialist parties, they could not come to power. The highest number of seats they got was in 1967, when the PSP got 21 seats, and the SSP got two seats. That was the record. In 1957, uh, they have got 11 seats. But one thing to be noted, their popularity could be attributed to the peace and movement in Orissa. They fought for the Kisans. They earned the support base. And they produced the best parliamentarians Orissa have ever produced. We had Surana Devedi. We had Bankavihari Das. We had Nisamani Khuntia. We had Prasanna Kumar Pal. We have uh, P.K. Das. Many others, Ravindra Mohan Das, Dibakara Patnayak, Banamali Maharana, and Narayan Sahu from Ganjam, Robi Ray. There are so many very able, forceful, well informed parliamentarians. At one point of time in the Lok Sabha, the leader of the PST group was Surendra Devedi, and the leader of the Praja Samajwadi Dal in the Rajya Sabha was Bankavari Das. Two Oriyas leading the parties in both the houses of parliament is a, a creditable thing. You know, the contribution of Surindra and Dibadi as a parliamentary did not go. So that was there. The Communist Party, their highest tally was nine members in 1957. Otherwise, they were getting seven, four, like that. But now there is not a single member in the Odisha Vidhan Sabha. Though we have a single member of the CPIM, the CPI was split into CPI and CPIM in 1964. So the CPIM was elected from four constituencies. Now you find Bonai in the present Vidhan Sabha. Then earlier it was Nilgiri from Baleswar. And from Puri, Brahmagiri and Ranpur. Ramesh Ronda from Ranpur. And uh, Mr. Panigrahi from uh, uh, Brahmagiri, Siddhaswara Panigrahi from Brahmagiri. In Odisha, CPI, they had a few constituencies. Like, for example, Prasanna Kumar Panda from Brajaraj Nagar. Then we had uh, from Soro, the CPI candidate Pitambar Panda. From Begunia, it was uh, uh, a very uh, powerful peasant leader in Gangadhar, Paikrai. From Aska, it was Harihar Das. From Kobishwaja Nagar, it was Sajanda Mahanti. The Nityanda Padan, then Sardar Dandapaniswai, from Chhatrapur it was Lokana Mahapatro, from Ersama it was Lokana Choudhury, then the Badachana, this Dusasan Jena, from Bhubaneswar we had Ram Pati, Nimapada was also represented by CPI. So these nine, ten constituencies, they had very powerful leaders. At, a, at one time, the seven MLAs of CPI in the Vidhan Sabha, they were so influential that one or two MLS were called super chief ministers of Odisha, Sadanda Mahanti and Lokanath Choudhury. They were very good parliamentarians, very good organizers. They organized the peasants, they organized the students. Even Arun De from Baleswa was a very prominent MLA who died recently. So Communist Party has that. Then after that, I will come to my analysis, how the governments have been formed. For example, after 51, 52, no political party commanded a majority. 
but the congress could uh, manage to form the government after 51 52 with the support of independents and others there were as a uh, uh, high as 21 members who were elected in 1951 as independent candidates so you find when hari krishna mata who was the chief minister of odisha was taken to center in 1950 Mata had a very good uh, uh, rapport with the Congress leadership. Then he was the youngest working committee member representing Odisha, and he was a very uh, brilliant man, brilliant leader, and a very shrewd politician, very intelligent. He knew how to play the cards. So after he went to Delhi, Navakusta Chaudhary was the obvious choice. but you know after he became chief minister we had many problems and mohatab in 1954 was sent to bombay as the governor of bombay to settle down factionalism there because nehru wanted mohatab to go and settle he was not happy in the raj bhavan at bombay so the nabakusta choudhary government could not withstand the unprecedented flood in odisha he could not withstand the criticisms of his own party members in the vidhan sabha he could not uh, face the recommendations of the state reorganization commission popular known as the fazal ali commission particularly on the issue of the two princely states that went to bihar now under jharkhand sadekala and kharuswa there was agitation so he could not withstand and he wanted to step down then mahatab came and in 1957 the congress party also could not get majority it was an election where the congress party got 56 seats and close number was 51 held by ganatantra parishad so the with the support of jharkhandis particularly the the entire story you can find in different books jaypal singh who was uh, their leader he come came to bhubaneswar he was persuaded by biju patnaik to support his guru harikrishna mahata he supported so it was a minority government but uh, because uh, defection is also a part of odisha's political culture if you look into the defection we have a very good uh, study made by professor balakrishna patnaik who did phd and mphil from barampur university his book you can go through how horrible it is defection before independence defection after independence so whatever it may be after 59 mata wanted to step down he said i am not in a position to work with the jharkhand mlas demanding the spoils of a peace they are reluctant to become ministers but they want other benefits so at this point of time it was biju patnaik who went to delhi wanted to con- convince the congress high command that whatever happened has happened let us go for a stable government because for a pretty long time it was argued that in spite of all resources we are not developing economically because of political instability so biju babu went and convinced the congress high command meaning their bai pandit jawahar lal nehru because he was at the time the most powerful man and biju babu was liked by nehru you can go through the entire history it has also been indicated by different authors so he gave three reasons reason number 1 that in case 56 members of the congress and 51 members of the ganatantra parishad they join hands will have more than 100 107 in house of 140 so there is no problem second in case we have a stable government we will have economic development we can have industrialization and we can develop odisha as a modern state third argument in the western part of odisha we we cannot enter certain districts certain areas 
So in case we go for coalition with Ganatantra Parishad, the main opposition party in the Vidhan Sabha, we can enter into their territory, particularly the western part of Odisha. So all these three conditions were okay, and Mahatma led a coalition government with uh, R.N. Singh as Deputy Chief Minister. So after the uh, period, one year or more, Biju Babu and Biran Mitra, they had uh, sent failures to become ministers. Hare Krishna Mata was not interested to take them as ministers. So Biju Babu again went to Delhi, convinced the Congress High Command that Mahatav is not interested for the development of Odisha. And R.N. Singh Dev has not changed his feudal mindset. So let us dissolve the government, dissolve the assembly, go for a fresh poll. And Biju Patnaik, in the meantime, was elected as the Pradesh Congress Committee Chief, defeating Banawali Patnaik, a close associate of Hari Kutama. And in 1961, Biju Babu took the leadership, and for the first time in 1961 elections, he got 82 seats in the Odisha Vidhan Sabha, and the Congress Ministry was formed. And Congress Ministry was formed. Uh, sir, we cannot hear you. In 1963, why? What is the problem? Uh, now, now we can hear you. Some network problem was there. Uh, okay, so you find uh, that. Uh, uh, can you hear me? Uh, we can hear you now. You can unmute your video also. Can you no hear problem. me? Uh, yes, we can hear you clearly. Yes, right now it's audible. So, 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 so you find that after sixty-three, Biju Babu was to step down as the chief minister under the Kamraj plan. Kumar Swami Kamraj Nath, who was the Tamil Nadu chief minister then, sir, sir, met sir, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. Sir, we, we cannot Javala see you Nehru. clearly. Sir, we cannot see you clearly. Yes, 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 sir. My tone is enough. Why to see me? So, no, sir, no, you sir. find uh, that, sir, that you can that, continue. That, uh, it's a request. K. K. Nada, he, he gave a proposal to Pandit Javala Nehuru that those who are in power as chief minister or union minister, they must step down and work for the party. Those who are in the party organization, they may be given the responsibility as union minister or chief minister. So under that scheme, Bijova was asked to step down, but Michael Brecher in his book writes, that in a particular context, it was Biju Patnaik's proposal, but in a different spirit. So he had to step down, and he was succeeded by Biryan Mitra. And Biju Babu saw to it that his close associate and the deputy chief minister, MLA from Katak city, become chief minister. At that time, there was a contest between Biryan Mitra and Pavitra Mohan who was assisted by Mohatab group. Pavitra Babu lost, and Binan Mitra won and became chief minister. After 65, Binan Mitra was asked to step down because there was CBI inquiry and other allegations of corruption. So he reluctantly stepped down, stepped down from chief ministership, and his position was taken by Sadasip Tripathi, a freedom fighter from Koraput, a very simple man to become the chief minister of Odisha. But the organization was under the under the control of Biju Patnaik and Biran Mitra. 
you know in 1970s early 70s a very prominent academician commented odisha would develop if we have a chief minister of bisonath das's honesty nabakrishna choudhury's integrity sadashiv tripathi's simplicity hari krishna mahatab's statesmanship biju patnaik's vision and dynamism and rn singh those administration because that was early 70s other chief ministers were not considered so such a simple man honest man even in the uh, autobiography written by nilamani rautrai he has characterized most of the chief ministers and he writes among the chief ministers i worked under nabakrishna choudhury was the best man integrity and has given all examples how he was simple how he was a man of great integrity so this period from 65 to 67 was a period when the congress became unpopular not only in odisha but in in the national level also because nehru died on 26th 7th may 1964 shastri ji who took over died on 11 january 1966 then followed by indira gandhi as prime minister so by 1967 the anti congress wave was there and in 1967 we find the main contender in odisha was congress and the swatantra and in the meantime two developments have taken place in odisha politics in 1962 the ganatantra parishad decided to join the swatantra party of india which was founded in 1959 by chakravarti rajagopal achari who openly said socialism is not the panacea for the problems that we confront in india he was a liberal man he was for lesser fare theory to be implemented he was for privatization he was for individual property rights so he founded swatantra party along with professor n g ranga m r masani and others and arun singh though said after 62 election that it is very difficult to continue a political party because you need funding so in spite of the fact that other leaders were not favorably inclined to merge ganatantra parishad with swatantra he sought to it the swatantra party and ganatantra parishad the merge so identity of ganatantra parishad was only for the period say from 1950 to 1962 only 12 years in 1966 itself in the month of may mahata hari krishna mahata founded the jana congress and jana congress and uh, swatantra they made uh, an alliance and they had also seat adjustment with the psp and the result showed that the congress could get only 31 seats in the vidhan sabha and the swatantra party got 49 seats and hari krishna mahata party jana congress got 26 so scholars like professor sukadev nanda who wrote my teacher who wrote a very good book on coalition politics in odisha he says it was a type of revival of the old coalition that existed between 1959 to 61 mahata and arun singh do here also arun singh do and mahata but mahata was not acceptable as chief minister so pavitra mon pradhan became the deputy chief minister so why this uh, particular uh, party became the very powerful force particularly in the coastal belt of odisha because uh, mahata was not happy with the way he was treated by uh, biju patnaik viran mitra and others so this coalition came 1971 coalition was one of the stable stablest coalitions in the whole country from 71 it would have easily controlled up to 76 there was from 67 to 72 but in the meantime hari krishna mahata played the trick 
and Arun Singh Dev wanted to start an inquiry commission against Hari Krishna Mahata to inquire into the allegations of corruptions against Hari Krishna Mahata. So that resulted in Jano Congress deciding to withdraw the support from Arun Singh Dev, but the ministers like Pavitraman Pradhan, Surendra Patnaik, they were not happy with this decision. So, Hare Krishna Mahatab along with wife Subhadra, who was elected from Bhubaneswar in a by-election, six others, four others, they went to governor. I remember at that time, in Orissa in Tarmal book, Sunit Ghosh has category written that they wanted to meet S.S. Ansari. S.S. Ansari was to go to Calcutta. He cancelled his Calcutta trip and summoned Arun Singh Dev that this is what has happened. That was the first week of January 1971. Arun Singh Dev said, His Excellency, I am not going to resort to any kind of nasty politics. I can very well, if I try, I can defect some MLAs, but I, that I do not want. So ultimately, R.N. Singh though, has to step down. So a very stable coalition government in Odisha could not continue for five years. Whom to blame? It is greed for power. It is uh, a type of uh, uh, machination to see that uh, the stable government is uh, to collapse. So we find we were forced to, for another election in 71. But in 1967 election, you know, Biju Babu, the most prominent leader of Congress, he lost from Patkura constituency to one PSP candidate, Mr. Chakradhar Satpati, by a margin of more than 11,000 votes. So that remained a very peculiar thing because Biju Babu was first elected from Chaudhar in 47, 46, then 51 from Jagannath Prasad, 51, 52. 57 from Saroda, then 61 from Chaudhwar, but 67 he lost to in Patkura to Chakravar Satpatya PSP. So in 71 election, we find a peculiar electoral process where the Utkal Congress was there. Like Jana Congress was formed in May 66, easy to remember. In May 1970, Utkal Congress was formed. Because the background was in 1969, there was a Congress split at the national level in terms of Congress O and Congress ruling, organization and ruling. Then Biju Babu was uh, not in a position to decide immediately whom to support. To support the Indira Gandhi faction or to support New Zealand faction. And after that, you know, there was a vacancy to the Rajya Sabha in 1970. And the Congress party in Odisha recommended Biju Babu's name. But the Congress parliamentary board in Delhi, instead of okaying the proposal of the state committee, it uh, wanted Narayana Patra of Burundi in Ganjam district, a very prominent freedom fighter, a peasant leader, a close associate of Vishwana Das to be the Rajya Sabha nominee. So in the meantime, Mr. Biju Patnaik wanted that T. Toyaka Sangana, T. Sangana, an Adivasi leader, a former minister who was earlier the Lok Sabha member, he be the candidate. So in the process, both Narayana Patro and Sangana lost and others they were elected. That was the reason why Biju Abu categorically said I am opposed to bossism from Delhi. And I'm sure regional parties have great future in Odisha. Remember, from 1970, May, till 17th April 1997, when he breathed his last, he has never gone back to Congress. Many leaders in Odisha, they've resigned from the Congress and returned back to Congress. Whenever they returned back to Congress, they said, it is politics of homecoming. Ghoro Bauda in Odia, they were telling. But Biju Babu never returned to Congress again in the entire political career. So after 1971, 
there was a type of hung assembly the swatantra party got 36 seats the utkal congress got uh, uh, less than that 31 seats the jharkhand got four the congress got 51 so in this process no party was in a position to form the government the congress was not prepared to form the government because there was no majority with them so a type of coalition came between three political parties Satantra 36, Utkala Congress 31, and Jharkhand 4. But who will become chief minister? They invited somebody who was not MLA of the Vidhan Sabha at that time. He was Vishwanath Das, the former prime minister, the former governor, the former member of the Constituent Assembly, the former member of the Rajya Sabha. He became, in the words of Professor Sukhadev Nanda, a reluctant chief minister. He agreed. In the ministry, you find Jharkhand was represented by Sidhalal Murmu, the son of Murmu, who has uh, been now, uh, Raghunath Murmu, who has uh, made this Santali language, Old Chiki language. So, in this ministry, because this was the background in 1971, Biju Babu lost in four assembly segments and the Lok Sabha seat. For the Lok Sabha Bhanjanagar seat, he lost to Dutikrishna Pandav of CPI, who was supported by Congress. R. He lost to Kanu Chana Lenka from his old seat, Chaudhwar, who was a very young leader, upcoming leader. He lost to Dr. Benudhar Baliyar Singh from Khurda, who became later on minister under Nandini Satpati. He lost to his political guru, Hare Krishna Mahatab from Bhubanesha. But later on, after a few months, he was elected with the record majority from the Rajanagar constituency. That was Biju Babu. So you find this ministry could not continue. There are so many reasons I cannot explain because of paucity of time. So this ministry collapsed after, say, 14 months. Then Nandini Satpati, who was not a member of the Vidhan Sabha, she was Union Minister of State Information and Broadcasting. She was sent by the Congress High Command, Mrs. Indira Gandhi, to become Chief Minister. And uh, she commanded the support of 94 MLAs in the Vidhan Sabha. And I remember those days we were in the college, Sadan Ramanti told in the assembly, Madam, you should not be happy. And in Uriya, he said, Dolo Tyagi Mananko Dwara Gotito Sarkar, Dolo Tyagarahi Bhangiva. So Nandini, who had earlier the communist connection, asked Sadanda Mahanti, representing Kavishnagar constituency, Sadanda Babu, upon Jyoti Shividya Kavudu Sikhilini. Sadanda Babu replied, Unless you have a principled coalition, he cited the example of C. Achut Manan of Kerala. Look at his majority. In a house of 140 in Kerala, he has uh, three, four members extra, 74 and 75. But look at the stability of the government because it is a question of some common minimum program and some common agenda, some common principle. This is the most uh, unprincipled government you are heading. You have MLAs who were elected from Jharkhand ticket. You have MLAs who were elected from Satandra Party ticket. You have MLAs uh, who were elected on Utkal Congress ticket and Congress Party, obviously. Can you survive? No. But the problem was, Nilamani Rautraya joined the ministry, assuring Biju Babu that shortly you will be taken back in the Congress. So along with Biju Patnaik, Pratap Chandra Mahanti, Prahlad Malik, Ram Krishna Patnaik, Sarat Kumar Kar, they were not taken, and Brindavan Naik. So we had two from Ganjam, Brindavan Naik and Ramakrishna Patnaik, who were cabinet ministers in 71, led by Vishwanath Das. And Prahlad Malik, Pratap Chandra Mahanti, Sarat Kar, you know, they were also prominent leaders, close associates of Bijubhav. So after a few months, the Utkal Congress again decided to revive the party resulting in the collapse of Nandini ministry. On 1st March 1973, when Nandini was preparing to face the budget session, she stepped down. 
and it was a history that biju patnaik led about 70 mlas of the odisha vidhan sabha to meet basappa danappa jatti then governor who refused to invite biju babu as the leader to become chief minister that went to the high court and justice gotukrishna mishra then chief justice of the odisha high court said Basappa Danappa Jatti, as the governor of Orissa, has not violated any part of the constitution, but he has violated the long-drawn British Convention of exploring the possibility of forming an alternative government, which is the hallmark of the British parliamentary system, which you call is Westminster model. So again, we were forced to go for 74 election. Again, Congress got 69 seats. and other opposition for example satendra got 721 similarly biju babu's party also got 30 or seats but nandini formed the second government with the support of seven members of the cpi group we had prasanna panda then we had uh, harior das we had uh, uh, this uh, gongadhar paikrai seven members arun de seven members soro pitambar panda they supported uh, sorry bangiri posi rudramohan das they supported the nandini government from outside they were not a part of the government but you know then emergency came there was difference between the sanjay group and nandini satpathi nandini wrote uh, nandini devi wrote a very broad article how she was asked to quit in dharitri i have got that copy of the particular article very vividly expressed so the the group opposed to nandini satpathi start they started a tirade i remember the first meeting of that group was held in barampur in ganjam kala parishad where samsundar mahapatra janaki bolo patnaik ramchandra rath somnath rath they all attended kanucharan lenka they said samsundar mahapatra initiating discussion said now we have to change change of the leadership and to give it to a young man we want to change but what will it be vinayak acharya became chief minister he continued as chief minister for 123 days 1 2 3 4 months 3 days then we had the election in 1977 a new history was created in odisha politics nilamani raut rai became chief minister securing 110 seats but in the meantime you must also know that the ministry led by binayak acharya was dismissed to force an election in odisha the logic given by the then janata government the center led by murari desai was since in odisha the con- congress lost the people's mandate they must be dismissed along with nine other states the same logic was followed by indira gandhi 1980 after the janata party had lost the election in 80 so history repeats itself so we had the janata government from 77 to 80 in 80 we had the congress government led by jb patnaik from 80 to 85 and 85 to 89 but before his term closed there was some problem in orissa and you know this man mr biswal hemananda biswal became the first tribal chief minister of odisha but janaki babu gave political stability to odisha it was the first government to continue for 5 years then of course we had 1990 election in which history was created and biju babu secured 123 seats in the vidhan sabha creating history it is record and the congress got only 10 seats i remember and that 10 num- 10 member assembly group was divided into four five groups so this political stability because at one time we were talking about political instability being the cause of economic economy 
or a, a lack of economic development. But it was seen that if you analyze uh, the entire 1951 till today, we have majority of uh, governments who were not antagonist to center. Now in India, there is a double engine theory. At that time when we were students, the national mainstream theory was being propagated. Particularly, I've heard Binak Babu always speaking in his character style, Ame Samaste Odisha Basi, Jatiyo Mahasrotara Samil Havakupuri. That was his style of speaking. So we have seen many friendly governments, but we could not develop. Then in 1990, Biju Babu became chief minister. 1995, again, Congress came to power with 80 seats, and J.V. Patnai became chief minister again. Then in the fag end of his uh, tenure, we had two tribals as chief minister. First it was Giris and Gamang, and he was asked to quit because of the super cyclone was not properly managed, particularly rehabilitation, relief operations. There were some lacuna. That is how Gamango commented when he was relieved as chief minister. Mu relief bantu thiva bale batya vipanno lokankor pai. More relief Bantu Thiva Bale, Congress High Command, Matej Mukhe Mantri Padaru, relief Kardala. That was his comment. So again, we had uh, Hemananda Biswa. Then from 1997, we had a different politics altogether. Biju Avu died on 17th uh, April 1997. He was a star attraction in Odisha politics while in Congress while in non-Congress dispensation. He was a union minister. He was chief minister twice. And his death was a terrible blow to the opposition. So ultimately, in December 26, 1997, we have seen the formation of Biju Janata Dal. And while Biju Janata Dal was uh, formed, Navin Patnag, who became the president of the Biju Janta Dal, said, I want to fulfill the dreams of my father. There is no time today. In another lecture, I will tell you what were the dreams of Biju Patnag. And he also said, it was a historical necessity that it will have to form a regional political party to give a befitting reply to the con corrupt Congress. That was, he said, I, I under my guidance, a very good MPhil thesis was prepared. Professor Sujanan Misro appreciated that MPhil thesis very much because the scholar had given vivid picture of the background of the Biju Janata Dal, why it was formed, what was its uh, manifesto, what was its electoral politics and all that. From 2000 onwards, we find it a different category. The BJP, which was not a very powerful party, even you know in 1984, the BJP got two seats. BJP was formed in 1980. And BJP, the earlier version was Jansang. It was not a very powerful party either. You find after 77, there was split in the Janata Dal. The Janata S Secular, led by Chaudhary Charan Singh Group, Janata uh, JP led by Chandra Sekh. Then we had the Janata Dal formed in 1988. In 1980, the Bharatiya Janata Party became a party. But in 1984 election, the party could get only two seats in the national level. One was Mr. Janga Reddy, who died about five, six days. He was elected from Hanam Kunda constituency in the present Telangana defeating P.V. Narasimha Rao. And another was A.K. Patel from Gujarat, from the Mehasana constituency. In that election, Atul Bihari Vajpayee also lost from Gwalior to Madhura Sindhya. You know that story. But now it is a very powerful party in the country with 303 seats. So history changes, politics changes, and it is the voters who decide. So naturally, after his death, there was two groups. One group was pro-BJP. They said we must, must have alliance with the BJP or merge with the BJP is required. 
another group said we will make make our regional identity and what we have seen from 2000 to 2022 the bjd in power the bjd and bjp they were in power in coalition between 2000 to 2009 after 2009 there was this uh, schism that developed particularly after the kondamal problem and the good response that uh, the bjd got from the municipal elections cutter rest is history i am not going to dilate so from 20 to 20 2000 to 2022 what, what is the trend in odisha politics there is no alternative to navin patnaik navin patnaik has got in the last election 47.1% of votes in in every successive elections the people of orissa gave a clean mandate in favor of navin bab and the congress has a very bad day now it has only nine members in the vidhan sabha and one member in the lok sabha whereas the bjp has improved its position and even in the lok sabha it has got eight members now and in the assembly also they have a substantial strength so what are the reasons first reason that could be attributed is the acceptability of navin patnaik leadership i have got uh, about 30 40 characteristics of navin patnaik as a politician as an administrator as an organizer i have no time to speak to you but few of things i will definitely tell you Navin Patnaik doesn't talk much. Even while talking to the press, he speaks very few words. He resorts to economic words. For example, sir, this has happened. What will be the stand of the government? The law will take its own course. Sir, you are going to Delhi. What is your agenda? I am going to Delhi to talk to central ministers as well as prime minister. on the development activities of the state thirdly he identifies talents selects right people keeps them in right place he maintains throughout a secular image there is no compromise on that he is a great champion of federal structure he always has in mind the oria pride and trying to take as much as benefit from the center he followed mg ramchandran philosophy mg ramchandran the chief minister of tamil nadu said never keep center on your wrong side if you want your development if you want your economic prosperity never antagonize with the center so for many times navin babu also said i am maintaining a eco distance from the congress and the bjp and he also talks about constructive criticism constructive cooperation with the center you know if he supports the nda candidate for the presidency he supports the upa candidate for the vice presidency in the last uh, rajya sabha election he allowed a bjp candidate to go to the center and uh, to our luck he has become railway minister and it minister and communication minister we are hoping many positive uh, action from him so like that and uh, navin babu is a great uh, voter of women empowerment in the last lok sabha election he gave seven candidates one third and you know most of them they got elected to the lok sabha he has assured 50% reservation to the women in the prais and urban local bodies he has believed in good of governance he has taken many proactive measures like self help group then uh, the self the micro financing and uh, mission shakti to empower women now uh, critics or those who analyze uh, voting behavior they say one of the major reasons of the victory of bjd is 
the support of women and you know now the voting percentage even voters 73 percent of voters are exercising franchise if you compare it from 1951 52 i have got the data but no time to explain now 73 percent of people they vote in the election so many other factors but what are the major challenges we put him the first and uh, some of the other qualities are he never talks ill of others he is ajatu satru he has gained the respect and goodwill of almost all political parties across the spectrum he never leaves odisha unless required he has rarely visited foreign countries unlike other chief ministers he stays in odisha he wants the good governance for example 5t is one of the or more sarkar can be taken as examples then he had pitha program kaliya program agriculture budget which is a separate budget he had devoted to augment the sport infrastructure bringing orissa to the sports map of the world he has also taken up many other steps to see that the temple city of puri bhubaneswar konark and others they are developed attracting tourism so he had youth policy women policy and he has also taken steps to expand the higher education in odisha so many things can be talked about that and he is also taking steps to help the marginalized sections of odisha people because you know we have 23% tribals 17.13% dalits they constitute 39 percent more than 39 and it is said we can't think of odisha without thinking its tribal population he had the tribal pol- policy he had the policy of relief resettlement and rehabilitation first state to do that and uh, he had also managed the covid pandemic very well in terms of providing health care in terms of mobilizing the support of the pri functionaries in the way of giving succor to the people but there are certain other challenges one challenge is special category status from 1979 when nilamani rautara was chief minister of odisha there has been a demand that odisha be considered under the special category status now after the 14th finance commission recommendations the government of india has taken a stand that we will not give you special category status but novin babu has been demanding it giving many examples for example our connectivity is poor we have a substantial number of sc and st population our financial management is as per the instructions of the government of india we want to develop industry we are uh, having this uh, so far the population is concerned we we are less considering national average then we uh, uh, face natural disaster at uh, frequent intervals and particularly on the disaster management navin patnaik has achieved national international recognition you know that so like that there can be many things plus points but how to develop odisha still we have people below poverty line still we have illiteracy still a large section of odisha population they are deprived of quality life these are some of the challenges but considering the political scenario now it seems in 2022 there is no other alternative to nobin bhatnai he is loved by people he is dynamic takes quick decision takes unexpected decision bureaucracy is under his control and the entire party and the government both are under his control so with these analysis within the limited uh, time available 
I could not give detail on every aspect. Each aspect, for example, our feudal culture or feudalism as a factor, defection in politics, coalition in politics, all these factors can be discussed. Party system, Rodisha in detail, and other factors. What is the um, failure of the different leaders at different points of time? All these factors, uh, whether we have been deprived by the central government in its various phases, all these can be discussed as parts of the politics in Orissa. And I think we have no dearth of books now. When we were students, books were very limited. Now a large number of books have been written by the scholars. We have a very good book by Professor R. N. Misra on uh, regionalism in Odisha politics. We have a very wonderful book written by my teacher, Professor Kisala Banerjee, on regional political parties in India, a case study of Odisha. That is a wonderful book. So now many scholars, electoral politics, Professor S. N. Misra has written on that. Uh, then women empowerment, we have many books. So there is tribal politics. Uh, another day we'll discuss about tribal politics in Odisha because that is a uh, another dimension of politics of Odisha, the Dalit politics in Odisha, the different movements in Odisha influencing political behavior of the voting of the people or politics of Odisha. The, the converse of discussion is very wide. I thank uh, Professor Himansu for reposing confidence on me and inviting me. I thank uh, all the students, scholars, my colleagues who have been very kind enough to listen to my deliberation. Thank you. Uh, so thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, you gave near about uh, one and a half hour talk. Uh, I think uh, what mistake we did is that uh, the topic itself, I mean, this topic is a very broad topic. I mean, where you will start, where you will end, how much time we have, I think everything is mismatching. Uh, but it's good uh, thing is that uh, today near about 160 participants, they have joined and when more participants are there, so obviously there will be more uh, network problem. Uh, so I'm sorry for this network problem uh, we encounter. Uh, sir, uh, I think uh, what you said, uh, if I will, uh, you know, uh, redefine or, uh, you know, if I'll give the title after listening to you, to your talk, uh, it will be like a history of Odisha politics. And uh, we all participants, I think most of the participants will agree with me that uh, in your talk, you gave a lot of information and you hinted uh, the changing pattern of the Odisha politics. And, uh, you know, most of the questions what uh, I, I, I had asked in the beginning while introducing the topic, uh, you, you answered it. Uh, but one question that is still now it is you know, stuck in my mind is that uh, why the impact of BJP uh, is very less in Odisha politics. Uh, but you know, nationally BJP is a very dominant political party. Though we have you know two or three say, you know cabinet minister from Odisha in the BJP uh, you know ministry. Uh, so this is the only one doubt I have. So before I move to uh, the questions asked by my students, I request Professor Surjanaran Misra. Uh, he is also very good at Indian politics and also in Odisha politics. And uh, he can better understand than other participants uh, on the, you know, what you, what you said on the history of Odisha politics. He is the only person who can better understand uh, it. So I request uh, Surja sir to give his observation uh, or give his comment on your talk. Uh, please, Surja sir. First of all, Himansu and my friend, Mr. Chaudhary, I'm expressing my 
apologies because I got up late and also I am having a slight fever. So I could not join at the beginning point. I had an engagement last night. I slept late, so got up late also. So a part of the pre-independence history of Odisha politics, I heard from Vishnu and uh, Vishnu's presentation is always full of uh, data and it's a well chronicled presentation because you cannot miss, barring a couple of factual errors. Like uh, he uh, talked about some names and dates which bound to be there when you are orally presenting facts, it will be there. But he maintained throughout the cool and also the growth of events leading to the shaping of Odisha politics. And rightly, he once has said, it's a, a political history of Odisha, well narrated. He has used the literature of two bachelors, Niranjan Patnaik and others, Lal Mohan Patnaik, Suniti Ghos, Odisha in turmoil, Coalition politics written by Professor Sukadev Nanda, and then referred to Professor Balakushtu Patnaik, and towards the end, a couple of books on Odisha politics and also Niramani Rautrai's Smriti and Anubhuti. That means he has looked into the decadal growth of Odisha's politics. Mm -hmm. But because of the paucity of time, I know Vishnu is well versed in the contours of Odisha politics. He has read the in between or between the lines of Odisha politics. So he could not present those things because had he entered into that kind of uh, political analysis of 1950s, 1960s, 1970s, it would have been very difficult for him to finish before 9.30. That was his problem because he has to finish it and he had to devote 10-15 minutes for the present government because the students are interested why BJD is going to create a record in the country because Himansu's question is why BJP is not rising in Odisha. So these are the questions he could not respond to because the problem is positive of time. Second is the route through which he moved. The narratives were a historical analysis of the growth of events in Odisha. And it's very difficult for a researcher to sum up everything. Sum up everything like in 1950s. What were the challenges? Because as he has mentioned, I have written somewhere that Odisha is a laboratory of political experiences and experiments. When there was the one-party dominant system in 1950s, Congress was leading the Congress system in the country. Odisha was suffering, Odisha Congress was suffering to get even the 50% of seats of the legislature. He has mentioned in 1951-52 election, falling sort of four seats and falling sort of 13 seats in 1957 election. And he has also narrated that the way the government of Nabokushan Chaudhary was doing better things, better performance, so far as the land reforms are concerned, so far as stable administration is given because of his vision. But unfortunately, the remote control was from a person who was unhappy with Raj Bhavan at Bombay. And the process started when he gave his uh, speech at Convocation of Utkal University and who where he presented the poor performance of Odisha government in the flawed 
for your the flood and also the agitation which was fanned by the people of Odisha as a resentment against Fajalali Commission's Sadaikala uh, Khanusma being parted from Odisha. So imagine, even Pandit Nehru could not have succeeded in that particular situation. Had Nabhukusha Chaudhuri got time, the Anchal Sasan or the land reforms concepts which he developed and the clean administration system which he developed would have changed Odisha's socio-economic map. Unfortunately, since 1957, we went in a populist way. It is populism, not popular politics. That populism has eaten away the vitals of our state, that Sirajuddin material, and Biju Patnaik not getting a position because the industry minister was arranging the and uh, the corridors of power was close to Biju Patnaik, so he was unhappy. I made you a minister, I gave you a ministerial uh, position, and you were not allowing me, my industries, calling the industries to get the benefit. So, by a single vote, he defeated Balmari Patnaik. And it was Biju Patnaik who decided, as the president of the UPCC, Utkal Pradesh Congress Committee, that the Congress party from the coalition withdraw its support, come back. There is no alternative. Even Pandit Nehru could not have done at that particular point of time. Biju Patnaik could do that as president of the Utkal Pradesh Congress Committee, leading to the first imposition of president's rule. Nehru period was enjoying a stable Congress government, but a Congress government uh, in a peculiar situation formed in Odisha had to fall because of this schism in Odisha politics. Between 1961 to 67, he has uh, given the vivid narrative about the nature of politics and how that nature of politics influenced the generation after that. And there, his uh, presentation in 1957, the role of Socialist Party in Odisha, the role of Socialist Party in bringing corruption to the forefront, and the role of uh, Harakushna Mahatab, who was ousted but given a non uncontested seat from Angul to Lok Sabha in 1962 election. Despite and he was made also deputy leader of the Lok Sabha in, under, in the Congress Party. But unfortunately, when Nehru died, he thought probably a deputy leader becomes the leader of the party. It was not done, and Harakushna Mahatab dissatisfied with the Odisha Congress, dissatisfied with the National Congress, had to go in a, a new regional dimension. And you have seen that by in whole of the country, certain Kerala Congress, Bihar Congress, uh, Bagla Congress, and Ujjana Congress in Odisha, they emerged from the Umbap Odisha, from Umbap the Congress Party. One thing Vishnu forgot that both Jana Congress and Utkal Congress were born out of the Congress Party. And it is history in the country that both of them walked into formation of the government during their tenure, first tenure. Jana Congress became a ruling partner and Utkal Congress became a ruling partner after its creation. So the, both these are the, the emergence of regional party and that was the science of regionalism which, which Kishorai Banerjee had properly written in his book. And uh, Aren Misra, uh, Ramnarayan Misra had written in his book. So he had looked into the dynamics of uh, Odisha politics, at least at that point of time. But because of paucity of time, he had to jump over some of the developments because it's not possible for a presenter within the pos within the specified time to look into the things and get read between the lines. And I find that even despite his ill health, his uh, mental presentation is okay. And uh, uh, he has not looked into that 1974 when, for, when after the delimitation, Viro Maharajpur constituency was created after delimitation. And that delimitation has given Mr. Hota to be elected as a Congress candidate. It's not, Viro Maharajpur was never a constituency in 1971 or prior elections. It was 1974 where uh, it was 
created under the Delimitation Act of 1973. Now, that was a turning point that entry of Congress or non gantra or non swatantra party into that part. And we have seen, and another thing he forgot, that in 1974 election, there was a Pragati Dal combination. Swatantra, Utkal Congress, SSP, they formed a Pragati Dal. And it was Biju Putnaik who became the harbinger of that particular idea and supported by Harakushta Mohtab. And that was Harakushta Mohtab's last political, say, experience with the elections and other things. So, on the whole, Vishnu's political chronicling of Odisha politics and the historical presentation of the facts and figures and proper analysis of the present personality and politics during the last two decades is uh, definitely uh, phenomenal so far as the students are concerned because they can get uh, they could get a proper test of Odisha politics. What are the events? Who manufactured and who managed the Odisha politics? Who were the persons behind the line and uh, also online and offline? So the online and offline materials are presented by Mr. Chaudhary and uh, as usual, Vishnu is in his proper shape in presentation, forgetting nothing remembering everything. I thank him for his good presentation. Thank you. So thank you, sir. Uh, Vishnu, sir, uh, you kindly respond to it. Then after that, we will move to the questions asked by the students. No, uh, I must uh, thank Professor Misra, who has always been my, uh, what, what do you say? the um, elder brother, my well sir, and uh, I have learned many things from him. Uh, but uh, one thing he has pointed out that uh, that Pragati Dal was not a political party. It was an arrangement inside the legislative assembly. And uh, interestingly, the first meeting of that uh, group was held in Barak Maidan, Barampur, where three former chief ministers who were opposed to one another at different points of time, they met at Barak's Maidan, along with Niromani Rautra, who became chief minister uh, in 77, to fight against uh, Nandini government. And in that particular meeting, Aryan Singh and Barampur said, our entire purpose of meeting here is, we have uh, forgotten all our uh, political fight of the earlier years, and we are here to oppose the concomento. He said in his uh, own style, concomento means uh, co Congress Communist Mentor. So we want to fight against concomento. That, that was the news I uh, flashed to the uh, uh, journalist and it came out in the media uh, in the vernacular dailies. So that was there, but in 1974, uh, Nandini was sort of uh, few MLS and seven member group they supported and he uh, she maintained. But the thing is, uh, her uh, reaction to the Congress High Command's call, particularly Sanjay Gandhi's call, uh, was uh, not positive. She said, I am the chief minister, I will not go to receive Sanjay Gandhi, who is not having even MP post or MLA post or any party post. Simply because uh, he is Indira Gandhi's son, I will not uh, go as chief minister with the national flag uh, being uh, put in my car to receive him. Impossible. So from that onwards, uh, there was a tirade started leading to his uh, departure. And Indira Gandhi said, Log chahte hain ki ap, apko jana chahiye. That is what she wrote in Dharitri. Log chahte hain no, Bishnu, the purpose of my reference to Pragati Dal is that the polarization process started with by the Pragati combine, which ah, was definitely, heading towards definitely. 1977. No, no. All, all, all three people, because Mahatav's independent Congress, having uh, five, six MLS, then Satantra Party hmm. and Utkal Congress. It was a hmm. federation of parties type, but it was confined to the legislature only. It never came as... Pragati Dal is a political party. That is what I wanted to tell. Then in that combination ultimately shaped the nature of politics in 1977. The anti-Congress ah, definitely, yeah, definitely. 
there definite definite after emergency many things have happened na sir hmm how emergency so thank you so thank you <laughs> vishnu sir and i think there is a very nice uh, you know dialogue between vishnu sir and surya sir it is always a pleasure to listen both of you so that we can understand the real politics actually uh you know uh, we are having uh, different personalities of our state university like uh, you know professor apurva mukhopadhyay from bardhavan university he was with us right now i cannot see him right now as a, as a participant uh, but we have dr smita naik from utkal university we have dr rosni kujur from my own department sambalpur university uh, we have dr sarada prasanna rao uh, barhampur university Uh, Dr. Ra- Dasreti Bhuiya from Barampur University. He has uh, they 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 all had joined uh, to this talk. Uh, you know, if uh, one of them wants to uh, you know speak something on this talk or give his or her observation, they are free to do. Otherwise, I will go to uh, the questions asked by the students. i want to make a small uh, observation yes meeta madam uh, good morning sir sujay sir and good evening professor uh, bc choudhury um uh, i'm sorry to say that I, these days i'm in quarantine finally after two years of hide and seek i caught up with covid uh, since third uh, uh, february uh, so still i'm not recovered fully uh i'm on leave now uh, but uh, when i saw this um, post uh, posted by uh, sopna i thought uh, i must join as a student of state politics and a direct student of professor misra um, and uh, a very um, uh, good fan of professor bc choudhury both are like uh, my mentors so um, um professor choudhury when you are narrating your uh, deliberations uh, everything was like going in front of me my eyes like flashing of all these uh, stories uh, that you narrated and so vividly you have presented uh, uh, your uh, as usual as your um, um, paper like uh, on state politics uh, uh, in odisha um professor choudhury um, yeah professor uh, sujana and mr has also uh, read i uh, uh, had written a book i have also uh, read that um, uh, you have referred to bk patnaik floor crossing uh, as a student of state politics i have gone through that book um, then professor sukadev nandas book uh, professor many books that was written even kishalaya banerjee's book um, so as a student of political uh, pol- uh, state politics i have gone through all these books um, but uh, these days uh, um, there is no paper on state politics but uh, this year we have introduced state and local administration and um, i think uh, uh, they could uh, uh, revive this paper because uh, students should know the uh, roots roots of politics like as you uh, in your uh, deliberation you mentioned that uh, uh, odisha is famous for uh, um, the uh, like not having a, uh, a con- continuous uh, coalition form of government and also floor crossing uh, was also a major issues and many issues which are students uh, present student present batch of students students uh, or present generation of students might not be aware of so this paper uh, should be revived uh, and um, it should be there um, and um, um, research is going on but uh, i think uh, on state politics um, uh, research is also lacking uh, earlier it was uh, there um, but uh, nowadays uh, no one is interested in doing uh, uh, on all these things but um, yes definitely things are changing and uh, changing in a uh, better directions and pandemic has also taught us many um, uh, good and bad things now, like uh, like how um, during pandemic the situation of politics um and um, uh, these days you might be going through uh, the news uh, the awareness level of the voters um uh, is uh, like uh, has increased to such an extent that um, they are now Uh, like uh, um, uh, the other day when we were doing voters day um, prof uh, dr um, uh, 
uh, our, uh, Mr. Hota was referring to that, that he did a small um, study on Panchayat and he was referring that how the leaders were, uh, the people of the villages are not accepting this uh, national or state level leader, rather they are um, um, like posing uh, thrust on uh, belief on the local leaders. Um, that is also happening that these days they are not uh, like ac accepting, they are not allowing the leaders to enter into their village because and they are of the opinion that uh, you have promised a lot and uh, you have not uh, kept your promise. So that is how the, the uh, this uh, type of study needs to be uh, uh, studied in detail, how the things are changing, maybe uh, due to media and social media, uh, so to say, the awareness level is cre um, being created uh, among the people and uh, the voters are very conscious of uh, all these things. Um, so um, I'm lucky to uh, got this uh, link at the time and uh, have the opportunity of listening to both the giants in the subject state politics in Odisha. Thank you. Thank you. It's my privilege. So thank you, Dr. Naik. Uh, I think uh, we are already you know, late in time. So I'm directly going to the questions actually. Sir, uh, students have asked some of the questions. I think if they have asked the wrong question or slightly writing the question wrongly, I request you to uh, rightfully understand those questions and answer uh, the spirit of that question. So I'm taking a you know, few questions actually. I cannot take all questions because already we are, uh, you know, we have been discussing since, you know, two hours actually. So one question is asked by Khageshwar uh, that what causes the partial development of the Odisha and how should the people of less developed area deal with the government? Uh, then, you see, uh, yeah. You see, this is a very good question. Actually, uh, you know, regionalism uh, or uh, a sense of deprivation has also influenced Odisha politics. So the Odisha government has appointed a commission to inquire into the causes of regional imbalance and uh, to find out uh, suitable measures to minimize uh, the regional uh, differences. Or regional imbalance. Why don't you say that you are a you are a member of that commission? Member of that commission. <laughs> so the thing is that, for example, uh, this uh, Odisha politics from the very beginning uh, was uh, discussed in terms of hill coast dichotomy. In the western part of uh, Odisha, it is mostly hill area, lived by Adivasis. So you take any indicator, whether you take education as an indicator or irrigation facilities as an indicator or agriculture as a factor or literacy as a factor or connectivity as a factor or railway network as a factor. In all these factors, there is a difference between the hill and coast. You compare the KBK districts with that of the coastal districts like Ganjam, uh, say Puri, Kotak, and Baleswa. In education front, you say how many colleges are there, were there in Odisha when Odisha emerged as a separate state, we had three colleges. One in Katak, the other two were in Ganjam, one in Barampur, Kolikot College, the other is uh, uh, Maharaja's College Parlakhamdi, now known as SK College Parlakhamdi. This Balangir College, Sambalpur, all these came much later. So education, that is road connectivity. Now you have got national highways and developed. Once uh, Habibullah Khan, who is a former minister, was telling me from Navarangpur to, to go to Bhuvaneshwar or even to come to Visakhapatnam, Vijayanagaram, there was only one bus. But uh, during the 80s, many buses were pressed into service. Now you find every 15 minutes there is a bus from Navarangpur or Jaipur towards Vijayanagaram or other parts of the country. So now it is changing. And another thing is in the western part of Odisha, tribals are living. You look at any indicator, the food, 
their food security. Now the uh, forest wealth has been totally destroyed, and uh, they are demanding three jaws, jala, jami, jungle. They want uh, the their culture to be defended. Suppose uh, one of the things that came for discussion was how to bring uh, tribal children to school. So there was a proposal by different district uh, administrations to have cluster school, so that three, four, five villages, they will have a school at the center, and it will be residential one, so that people commuting four, three kilometers to go to a school will be difficult. There was another problem: dropout among girls are highest in the tribal areas. So we had a governor. Uh, Bandare, who talked about Gyana Loko program, that uh, through NSS, let us go to different villages and convince the uh, tribal uh, parents to send their children to school. So you take any indicator. That is why you find when Aizer was there uh, in Barampur, and most of the institutions they came in Bhubaneswar, I am given to Sambalpur. You have now medical colleges in different parts of Odisha, so I think uh, for the last ten, uh, fifteen years, the government is also taking care of the regional aspirations. Otherwise, if the people of the region revolt, then there will be problem. So, heel coast to dichotomy, or what was called Mogal Bandi and Gorajat. Mogal Bandi was the area directly administered by the British government. And Gorjat areas were under the princely states or native states or Gorjatas. So there was perceptible difference. When studies were made on regionalism as a factor of state politics, all these things have been pointed out. So uh, that is why we have to take uh, steps. Because uh, another thing is there have been regional aspirations in different parts. We may call it sub-regionalism, but th this is a fact. People want administration at the doorstep. People want government must give attention to all parts of uh, Odisha, and particularly the question is very good in sense that underdeveloped areas must be given more priority than the areas which are already developed. Okay, sir. Next question. Sir, another another question is asked by uh, Samit. Uh, what is it that keeps BJD as the people's first choice in Odisha? Don't we have any alternative or a leader who can win the loyalty and praise of Odisha people like Nobin Patnaik? I have already indicated what are the plus points of the BJD party and Nobin Patnaik's leadership. Yes, sir. You and, have, uh, have already but, answered but, it. But, 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 but the thing is, even with all popularity, what is the percentage of votes? 47.1. That is the vote, na? Highest vote. Yes. Then what about 53 others? So it is being distributed. And now you find number of candidates are also rising. And uh, you have put the question, first question, why BJP is not coming up in spite of all this uh, propaganda, in spite of uh, a government led by uh, BJP is there the center. There are some, several reasons for that. You know, those Sir, areas, Pananta, Pananta is asking. Those, those, those areas, those areas where the Ganatantra Parishos were doing well, the Swatantra was doing well, in those areas now BJP is a powerful force. You you think of Sambalpur constituency, your Sundargada constituency, in Balangir constituency, the BJP MPs have been elected. Burgard constituency. Only Bhubaneswar is a coastal seat which BJP got. Otherwise, most of them are in uh, the western Odisha. So maybe it will take time, but you know, to come up from a zero to such a level, it takes a lot of time. And uh, Biju Babu had a support base in spite of the fact that his entire career from 46 till 1996. Uh, 50 years, 50 decades he was in electoral politics. He lost election, he won elections, but he was in electoral politics. And in coastal Odisha particularly, 
in every village you go there are biju supporters you go to any village like in every village you go in korapur district there are congress supporters they may not be winning now they got uh, this uh, seat uh, by uh, this uh, lok sabha election 2019 ramchandra ulka's son he got elected he was elected from korapur constituency but look at the um, electoral politics of uh, korapur uh, in 50 60s 70s Bhagwati Pradhani was elected from 67 election onwards eight or nine times. When he was given finally the ticket, he said, "I will not contest. Though I am sure I will win, I will not contest because there is no change. I become disgusted going to Delhi." So that basare Hindu repent to jai thala visa partner pachare wagya Pradhani Babu. Apun to sabole juchondi Indira Gandhi hari gala sato sore apun jitile. छोटिया गोटे होस्टेल रही कि कौन से जगह से दिल से लोकसभा तो कौन डा अच्छी से थे सो ही रिफ्यूज टू कॉन्टेस्ट देन इट वाज सिक्योर्ड बाय बीजेपी नाउ इट इज बाय बीजेडी बट बीजेपी जे वेरी पावरफुल फोर्स इन नवरंगपुर कांस्टिट्यूएंसी गुड यू फॉलो और नॉट इवन इन कोस्टल बेल्ट दे आर पिकिंग अ वेल बट इट विल टेक टाइम एंड बीजेपी इज टेकिंग एडवांटेज बिकॉज कांग्रेस हैज बिकम वीक There is no Janaki Bola Patnaik in the Congress. Janaki Babu is a super politician. He knew how to manage things. I remember at one time, one zero seven MLAs they grouped together and they wanted leadership change. He created such a situation. He convinced the MLAs in such a manner that out of one zero seven, the number came to seven. Like we say. नौश नौ सुन नहीं गला डामरा का रोहिला कहते गोला कहते शहे सात रु सात पड़ा जयपटनायकोस्ट With so many developing program and evolution, is it really a poor state? I don't think so. Is it due to the same political party ruling over two or three decades? Are we really not a political? Are we really need a political reform? Please articulate this. No, no. The thing is, first we have political stability. We have a chief minister who was completely having grip over administration and politics. We have a chief minister who was maintaining very good relationship with the UPA government, and he has equally maintained good relation with the present dispensation. You know, in the last few days, Narendra Modi is uh, praising Nobin Patnaik's leadership like anything. That he is the only chief minister who is following cooperative federalism model. He is cooperating with the center. He is uh, with the center in the national interest. Suppose he supported uh, CA. He supported the um, other measures taken by NDA, but he opposed the national register uh, to be registration to be maintained. That book of registry to maintain. He is opposing. So like that. But um, you know, Navin Babu is bargaining with the center. and he always says whatever will be in the interest of the state of orissa i will follow that mode sir let's take the last question asked by anant uh, he is doing phd in our department that what is the position of present government on mahanadi river water dispute you see mahan this mahanadi river dispute Was started from uh, when the BJP government was there in power in Chhattisgarh, 
now there is a congress government but the thing is uh, it has been referred to different tribunal tribunals then uh, we require uh, for, for example still uh, political pressure to convince the chatisgarh government not to harm our interest in any way because river is a national resources it is not somebody's but they say if we are having some embankments or some projects why do allow the manadi river to go to sea and why don't to make some arrangements to preserve the sea like uh, hiragud dam was there some other measures can be taken so that, that is the question so efforts are on even our border dispute with uh, regarding kotia with andhra pradesh even on the polavaram project that is coming up in a big way by andhra pradesh government it is causing uh, you know displacement many tribal uh, villages will be washed away so negotiation is on we are trying attempting but it is a question of how many uh, how much pressure you are putting on center or the other states you know these are these things have to be settled with uh, negotiation proper negotiation not by confrontation so reconciliation is the only method how to get it done so thank you sir uh, you have taken uh, almost all questions if some questions are left uh, you know i am really very sorry because this speaker is speaking uh, beyond 2 hours so i think we should not give more pain to this speaker uh, now we are at the last part of this web talk i request uh, uh, one of my student uh, he opted my optional paper uh, sagar badhai he belongs to baleswar right now he is doing his mphil under the guidance of dr ramakrishna pradhan uh, in the department of social science faket mohan university i request sagar to provide a vote of thanks to our uh, to to uh, our bishnu sir please sagar thank you sir dr himanshu sakar mistra sir for giving me this opportunity to deliver the vote of thanks to all the dignitaries are assembled here in this session first of all i would like to express my sincere gratitude to the chief speaker professor bishnu charan choudhary sir from barampur university yes sir started with this session about the historical background of odisha politics from present from uh, past to present and also stated about the political parties and also take uh, reveals with the pre independence uh, story about odisha politics and uh, also deal with the political stability and instability of odisha politics and lastly thank you so much sir for accepting our invitation and taking up time from your busy schedule and enlightening us and then i would like to express my thanks to our uh, dr uh, sarada sarada prasad uh, prasanna raut sir from barampur university for introducing our chief speaker and then i would like to extend my uh, gratitude and thanks to dr himanshu sakar mistra sir from uh, sambalpur university and also delineated the theme on today topic about odisha politics and i i also extend my uh, vote of thanks to the professor sujana ran mr sir from utkal university and also dr smita nayak madam from utkal university dr rashni khujur from sambalpur university professor apurva mukhapadhyay from bardhaman university and dr dasrathi bhuya from barampur university and lastly i would like to thank you all the participant for their active participation in this session thank so you. thank you saga thank you very thank much i am also thanking you for your vote of thanks now uh, we are at the you know we are ending this session sir uh, i am stopping the recording sir okay thank you